So welcome to my editing bench. This is a photo shoot I did with the Fujifilm GFX 100S, which I already did the behind the scenes. So click on the link to watch. Also shooting with the GFX 100S was a dream come true because as a portrait and fashion photographer, it's always been my dream to shoot on medium format. It's an amazing camera. It's 102 megapixels. So as you can see with this photo, the Fujifilm GFX 100S and then with the lens I used the GF250 F4 which is such an amazing lens to shoot with. Even though it's an F4 on a medium format, it's like an F2.8 equivalent on a full frame camera. So that's one thing about medium format because the sensor is so huge. An F4 lens is basically like a 2.8 lens. So obviously I took a lot of photos with it, but here are a few um, selected photos that like I've worked on. Uh, you can watch the behind the scenes as I said, and also there's a link to for you to see uh, the edited photos. So this was one of my favorite photo out of the few that I, I really love the lighting, the colors and the composition. So as a 100 megapixels camera, even a shot like this, you can still zoom in to the model's face and you still see the details. It doesn't pixelate even at 100% zoom. A shot like this, which like you can see is a full shot. You can zoom in to the model's face and still have details sharp enough so that's a result of shooting with a medium format camera with a high megapixels and with this photo i use the 45 mm 2.8 so 45 mm on a medium format is like 35 mm on a full frame and f 2.8 on a medium format is more like a 1.8 or 1.4 or let's say 1.8 yeah when it comes to the settings, I shot at f7.1 and with the shutter speed 1500th of a second. With the lighting, I used the Profoto B10X. That was my first time using that light too, which as I said, using all of this gear was a dream come true and I really, really enjoyed the shoot. Now this is the raw and then this is the edited. As you can see, there's not much difference from the raw and the edited. It's basically me boosting the colors and also replacing the sky and making it more interesting instead of it being plain. And the rest is just skin retouching. So let me quickly take you guys to Photoshop to show you how I was able to achieve this editing. So right now we are in Photoshop and the first thing I would like to do is do my cropping as i said i always crop by four by five and also when i'm shooting i always have this four by five crop in my mind so i always leave space enough that when i do the cropping it wouldn't be cutting out any important parts of the photo the first thing i do is do my cropping four by five uh, i use it to crop and also recompose the photo properly and also straighten it if it's, there's any sort of like slant in the photo so i just straighten it a bit and crop it in a little bit more now somebody would ask me that why is it that i don't do a lot in uh, capture one first of all capture one is the only software that can properly handle fujifilm files so that's why I always prefer to open it with Capture One before I transfer it into Photoshop. And coming from, coming from Lightroom as a photographer, it's always easier for me to do my editing in Photoshop and also Camera Raw. Capture One is basically to open up the files and give me the proper colors before I edit them in Photoshop. So yeah, I think I'm okay with this crop. So I just hit enter. 
as you can see it's already taking out the soft box that was in the photo so the easiest thing to do is basically doing a content away so you select your lasso tool and you just select the soft box and you right click and fill and then content away this should automatically clear that part for you now the next thing is that i want to boost my colors and with this i always um, use camera raw i always love to use camera raw to do this you can do that in capture one everybody and how they uh, do their post production but i just do it in a way that like is comfortable for me i go to camera raw and uh, basically i go to the hsl adjustment and i go to saturation and then just increase the colors over there so if it's blue i always increase it by 50 percent so if it's blue i just make it 50 percent the blue is the aquas 50 percent the yellows 50 percent because there's a bit of yellow in the dress so the purple and the magenta to i always increase it because of the the pink color of the car so just boost those colors and let me see because of this red here i may want to increase the reds too just to boost it sometimes some reds affect the skin of the model so i usually don't like to increase my reds but there are some situations that it doesn't affect the model so in this situation i've increased it a bit the next thing i want to do is zoom in and see her eyes i just want to clean her eyeballs a bit you know sometimes the ambience or the environment affects the eye color of the, of the model so and even when you are retouching or like doing your post production increasing colors sometimes when you increase some colors it affects the the eyes and the teeth of the model so so generally like i like to make it more whiter so with this one the easiest way that i always use is by using the brush camera raw and when i pick the brush i do my settings by taking out the saturations to negative 50 increase my exposure to plus 50 and then highlight plus 20. so with this you just when it paint over the eye it just makes it whiter compared to it being dark so after this then you click ok it takes you back to photoshop now the next thing i want to do is by replacing the sky and thankfully photoshop is able to do it i'm currently using photoshop 2021 but they've been able to integrate it in it where you can easily change your sky so you go to edit and you go to sky replacement and there's a number of skies over there which you can just choose that if it fits what you want to do so you you decide as a creative person you would decide how you want to replace the sky and if the particular clouds that you're choosing fits the photo yeah so there's a lot of options here that you can choose just to see if it works for you so sometimes you can flip it to see how it also looks and makes it more random compared to it being like calculated sometimes you flip it to make it more random because clouds are like random in the sky they are not in a particular um, formation so you just play around and choose what works for you so after that then you click ok and it will create a new layer for you where you can further adjust it more so when you look at the sky i mean generally i would want it a little bit faded to make it more natural compared to it being full like it's too deep so i want it to be a bit faded so that I can look natural and like cause it's fat like let's say if 
the sky was like really there it should be far away and a bit faded like it's obviously far away from the morning so it should be a bit faded to make him look more natural so i reduce the op opacity to 46 percent and it looks cool for me and i also think that it should be a bit blurred since it's far away from the model like the sky is far away from the model so like it should be a little bit blurred it should not be as sharp as the model so with this one i just go into the filter menu and then select the blur i think a gaussian blur should be okay let me increase it to see how it will look <laughs> this is too much so yeah i think at 3.0 pixels it is just a little blur to it yeah so this is before and then after before and after i love the way the sky replacement is able to perfectly move and align itself around the model so after this you can just merge them so that it can be one layer so the next thing is basically just skin retouching i use retouching academy to do my frequency separation and i know most of you have different methods of achieving the same thing so that's the next thing left for me and i've already done a video about how i do my retouching so you can click on the link to watch it anyway thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video